In this lecture, we'll be discussing about the next scheduling algorithm, which is the multi-level feedback queue scheduling. So in the previous lecture, we have discussed about multi-level queue scheduling and we have seen how it works. So there we saw that we have classified our processes into different groups and these groups were made into different queues and there were schedulings happening between processes within the queues and also there were scheduling happening among the queues themselves. And we saw there that when one process is assigned to a particular queue, it was always assigned to that queue itself. That means a process that is assigned to a certain queue will not be moved to another queue. It will always belong to that same queue and that same queue alone. So the main difference that we are going to see between multi-level queue scheduling and the multi-level feedback queue scheduling that we are discussing now is that here in multi-level feedback queue scheduling, we are going to be able to move the processes between queues. That means one process will not always belong to one certain queue, but it can move from one queue to another. The multi-level feedback queue scheduling algorithm allows a process to move between queues. So this is what I just explained. So the idea here is to separate processes according to the characteristics of their CPU burst. So different processes will have different characteristics of their CPU burst. Some may take longer time, some may take lesser time. So depending upon these characteristics, we are going to separate the processes and allow them to move between certain queues. So if a process uses too much of the CPU time, it will be moved to a lower priority queue. So this is a good example of how processes can be moved between queues. So let's say that we are having certain queues here with certain levels of priorities. And let's say that there is a process that belongs to a high priority queue which is using the CPU for a very long time. Then what happens? We know that processes that belongs to the lower priority queue are always waiting for the processes in the higher priority queues to complete their execution so that they will get a chance. But if the process in the higher priority queue is using the CPU for a very long time, then what happens? All the other processes end up waiting for a long time. So in this kind of a scenario, in case of a multi-level queue scheduling that we discussed in the previous lecture, it is impossible to do anything. But in a multi-level feedback queue scheduling, which is the one that we are discussing now, here what we can do is, we can move that process that is using the CPU for a long time from the higher priority queue to a lower priority queue so that the other processes can complete their execution and everybody will get a chance. So this is an example of how processes will be moved between queues. So this scheme leaves IO bound and interactive processes in the higher priority queues. So we know that the input output bound operations and the interactive processes are the ones that belongs to the higher priority queues. And also they are the processes that will not be taking a very long time. So we have discussed about this interactive processes in the previous lecture. So if you have not watched the previous lecture of multi-level queue scheduling, I recommend that you watch it first because this multi-level feedback queue scheduling is like an extension of the multi-level queue scheduling. All right. So this scheme that we are following here will leave the input output bound and the interactive processes in the higher priority queues. And in addition, a process that waits too long in a lower priority queue may be moved to a higher priority queue. So here in this line, we saw that when a process in a higher priority queue is using the CPU for a long time, it is moved to a lower priority queue. Now here we are doing the opposite. That is, if a process is waiting for so long in a lower priority queue to get the CPU, then that process can be moved to a higher priority queue. So when a process is waiting for too long, waiting to get the CPU, but it's never getting the CPU, then what will happen? It will end up waiting and starving for the CPU. So such a process, if it is in a lower priority queue, will keep on waiting because it has to wait until and unless all the queues above it of higher priority are empty. Only then it can be executed. So if there is a process like that, that is waiting in a lower priority queue for a very long time, then that process can be moved to a higher priority queue so that that process will also get a chance for its execution. So this is another example of how process can be moved from a lower priority queue to a higher priority queue. So this form of aging prevents starvation. So if we are using this kind of a method, then this form of aging will prevent starvation. So we have already discussed this term aging in one of our previous lectures. So when a process is waiting for a long time to get the CPU, then it ages. And as it ages, we can move it to a higher priority queue. 
and then it will not starve but it will also get the cpu for its execution so that is why we say that this form of aging prevents starvation all right so now let's take an example to understand in a better way how this multi-level feedback queue scheduling works so here is an example of some multi-level feedback queues so here we are having three queues q0 q1 and q2 where q0 is having the highest priority and q1 is having the next highest priority and q2 has a least or the lowest priority so these are three queues so in case of a multi-level queue scheduling that we have already discussed we know what happens there will be processes belonging to these different queues and there will be some scheduling algorithms that each queue will be following and the processes will be scheduled using those scheduling algorithm within the queues and also there will be a scheduling among the queues based on the priority of the queues now let's see what happens in multi-level feedback queue scheduling so in this example we see that q0 is the queue of the highest priority so the processes in q0 will be the first ones that will be allowed to execute and after that when all the processes in q0 have either completed their execution or when q0 is empty only then processes belonging to q1 will be able to begin their execution and similarly all the processes belonging to Q2 will be able to do their execution only when Q1 and Q0 are empty because that is how the priority works. So processes belonging to queues of lower priority will be able to execute only when the queues of higher priorities are empty. So that same thing will be followed even in this multi-level feedback queues. All right. Now let's say that within these queues, there are certain algorithms that are followed for scheduling. So let's say that in Q0, there is something like a round robin scheduling. It may not be exactly a round robin scheduling, but let's say that it is following some scheduling algorithm just like a round robin where the quantum of time is 8 milliseconds. That means a process will be allowed to execute for 8 milliseconds. That is the time quantum. And then in Q1, the processes will be allowed to execute for a quantum of 16 milliseconds. And in Q2, the processes are scheduled using a first come, first serve scheduling algorithm. So in this multi-level feedback queue scheduling, what will happen is that, first of all, the processes in this process Q0 will be allowed to execute. So the first process that is at the head of the queue will get the CPU for its execution and it will be allowed to execute for a time quantum of 8 milliseconds. So if that process completes its execution within 8 milliseconds, then well and good, it's finished. But if the process did not complete its execution within the time quantum of 8 milliseconds, then what will happen is that that process will be moved from this Q0 to the tail of Q1. So let me just repeat that. If a process executing in Q0 does not complete its execution within the time quantum of 8 milliseconds, then that process will be moved from Q0 to the tail of Q1. Mind it, to the tail of Q1. And then again, the processes in Q1 will be allowed to execute and mind it, they will be allowed to execute only when Q0 is empty. So let's assume that Q0 is now empty and then the processes in Q1 can now begin their execution. So the first process that is at the head of Q1 will begin its execution. And then there is a time quantum of 16 milliseconds here. So if a process can complete its execution within 16 milliseconds time, then well and good, it's finished. But if it is not able to finish its execution within the time quantum of 16 milliseconds, then that process will again be moved from the Q1 to the tail of Q2. So the same thing that happened here is happening here as well. So the process is moved to the tail of Q2 if it did not complete its execution within the time quantum of 16 milliseconds. And in Q2, the processes will be scheduled using the first come first serve scheduling and also keep in mind that the processes in q2 will be able to execute only when q1 and q0 are empty because this is the least priority queue so here we see that there is scheduling happening among processes within the queues there is also scheduling happening among the queues themselves and also we see that there are processes moving from one queue to another so this is like an extension to the multi-level queue scheduling 
here processors can move between the queues. So that is the main thing here. So here in this example, we have seen how processors are moving between queues based on some certain criteria or parameters. Now let's take a closer look at the parameters based on which this multi-level feedback queues work. So in general, a multi-level feedback queue scheduler is defined by the following parameters. So the first parameter is the number of queues. So it will depend upon the number of queues. So this is one of the important parameters. So in the previous example, we saw that there were three queues having three different levels of priorities. So number of queues is one parameter. Then the second parameter is the scheduling algorithm for each queue. So we also saw that each of the queues were following a different scheduling algorithm. So in the above example that we took, we saw that Q0 and Q1 were following something like round robin, not exactly round robin, but something like that in which a time quantum was involved. So Q0 was using a time quantum of 8 milliseconds, Q1 was using that of 16 milliseconds, and Q2 was following a first come first serve scheduling algorithm. So the scheduling algorithm that are used in each queue also counts as another parameter for multi-level feedback queue scheduling. Then the next parameter is the method used to determine whether to upgrade a process to a higher priority queue. So we have said that we can move processes from one queue to another. So the method that is used to determine whether we should upgrade a process from a lower priority queue to a higher priority queue. So in the first slide, I have taken one example and explained to you that when a process belonging to a lower priority is waiting for a long time in the lower priority queue, it will starve for the CPU. So at that time, we were moving it to a higher priority queue. So in the same way, there may be different methods that can be used to determine when we should upgrade a process to a higher priority queue from a lower priority queue. Then the next parameter is the method used to determine when to demote a process to a lower priority queue. So we are able to move a process from a lower priority queue to a higher priority queue. Similarly, we are also able to move processes from higher priority queue to lower priority queue. So that was the example that we just saw above. So there we saw that the processes were moved from higher priority queue to lower priority queues. So there must be some method that is used to determine when we should demote the process or move it down to a lower priority queue. So in the previous example that we took, we saw that when a process was not able to complete its execution within the time quantum, then at that time we were moving it to a lower priority queue. So these kind of methods that are used to determine when to demote a process to a lower priority queue will contribute to another parameter of the multi-level feedback queue scheduling. And finally, the method used to determine which queue a process will enter when that process needs service. So when we are moving a process from either lower priority to higher priority or from higher priority to lower priority, we have to determine to which queue are we going to move it. So in the previous example, we saw that when a process was moved from a higher priority queue to a lower priority queue, it was moved to the queue which was just below that in order of priority. So similarly, there will be methods which will be used to determine to which queue should we move a process when we are moving it. So this is another parameter that will be used in a multi-level feedback queue scheduling. So this is basically how the multi-level feedback queue scheduling works. So it is like an extension of the multi-level queue scheduling because here we are following almost the same things but we are also moving processes between queues. So there are many things that has to be taken care of in this like the algorithm that is used for scheduling processes in the queues then the way the queues are scheduled among themselves and how the processes are moved from one queue to another. So the implementation of this multi-level feedback queue scheduling may be a little bit complex because all these things has to be taken care of, but it is also a very interesting and a good algorithm that we can use for scheduling. So I hope this multi-level feedback queue scheduling is clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.